Welcome to Trojan Corner, The Number Devil, a mathematical adventure by Hans Magnus Enzensberger. The Fourth Night. The places you drag me to, a cave with no opening, a forest with ones for trees and mushrooms the size of armchairs. What about today? Where am I anyway? At the beach, can't you tell? Robert looked around. White sand far and wide, the number double perched on an overturned rowboat. The surf rolling in behind him, and not a soul in sight. I bet you've forgotten your calculator again, the number devil said. Look, how many times do I have to tell you I can't take all my stuff to bed with me at night? Do you know what you're going to dream the night before you dream it? Of course not, the number devil answered. Still, if you dream of me, you can just as easily dream of your calculator. But no, I've got to come up with one by magic. I've got to do everything for you. And then you complain it's so too soft, or too green, or too sticky. It was better than nothing. All right, I'll try, the number devil said. He raised his wand, and a new calculator appeared before Robert's eyes. If the last one was like a frog, this one was like a soft, furry bed or sofa. And gigantic. At one end, it had a little board with fur-covered number keys. But the screen for the number stretched the entire length of the backrest. It was one weird calculator. Now... Enter one divided by three, the number double ordered, and see what you come up with. One divided by three. Robert punched the keys. The following answer came up in green, a long, long screen. Zero point three 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 three. Doesn't it ever stop? Robert asked. Of course it does, the number double answered. It stops where the screen stops. And then what? Then it goes on. You just can't see it. But it's always the same. One three after the next. How boring. Right. And done, too. It's much easier to write one-third, one over three. And then I don't have to worry about all those threes creeping up. True, said the number devil. But then you've got to do with fractions. And fractions, if I'm not mistaken, are something you can't abide. If one-third of 33 bakers can make 89 pretzels in two and a half hours, then how many pretzels can five and three-fourths bakers make in one and a half hours? No, no, anything but that. Give me decimals any time, even if the numbers never end. I just like to know what all those threes are doing there. Simple. The first three after the dot means three tenths. The second means three hundredths. The third means three thousandths, and so on. You can take it from there on your own. 0 0.3, 0 0.03, 0 0.003, 0 0.0003, 0 0.00003. Get it? Good. Then try multiplying everything by three. The three, the three tenths, the three hundredths, and so on. No problem, said Robert. I can do it in my head. 0 0.3 times 3 equals 0 0.9. 0 0.03 times 3 equals 0 0.09. 0 0.003 times 3 equals 0 0.009. 0 0.0003 times 3 equals 0 0.0009. Good. Now what happens if you add all the 9s together? Let's see. 0 0.9 plus 0 0.09 equals 0 0.99. And 0 0.99 plus 0 0.009 equals 0 0.999. Nines down the line. I bet it keep on like that forever. You are right. Though if you think about it, there's something fishy going on. One third plus one third plus one third equals one, doesn't it? Because a third multiplied by three equals a whole. Always has and always will. Well, what do you think? I don't know, said Robert. Something's still missing. 0 0.999 is nearly 1, but it doesn't quite get there. That's the point. That's why you've got to keep the 9s going and never stop. Easier said than done. Not for the number devil. Without another little chuckle, he waved his walking stick, and in a twinkle of an eye, the sky was filled with an endless chain of purple 9s slithering higher and higher. Stop! Robert shouted. Please stop. It's making me sick. A snap of my fingers and they're gone. But not until you admit that the chain of nines behind the zero, if it goes on forever, will turn out to be equal to one. Meanwhile, the chain had kept growing, and the sky slowly darkened with nines. Robert was now as dizzy as he was nauseous, but he refused to give in. Not on your life, Robert shouted. No matter how many times you add to your chain, there will always be something missing, the last nine. There is no last nine, the number devil furiously shouted back. Robert no longer jumped out of his skin each time the number devil lost his temper. But now he knew that whenever it happened, there was something interesting coming up, something the number devil couldn't easily explain. But the chain was flapping dangerously close to Robert's head, 
and had wound so tightly around the number devil that much of him had receded from you. All right, Robert said. I give in, but only if you get rid of the knights. It's about time, said the number devil, raising his stick, which now had several layers of knights entwined all around. Then he mumbled something gibberish to himself, and the chains disappeared in a flash. Phew, said Robert. Does it only happen with threes and nines, or do other numbers make such awful chains too? There are chains of endless as the sand on the beach. How many would you say there are between 0, 0.0 and 1.0? Robert thought long and hard. An infinite number. As many as between one until the cows come home. Not bad, said the number devil. Quite good, in fact. But can you prove it? I can. Show me. All I have to do is write a zero and a dot, said Robert. And one after the dot, 0 0.1. And then two after that, and so on. And if I keep going, I'll put all those numbers that have ever been written after the dot before I come to 0 0.2. Whole numbers all. Of course, all whole numbers. Every number between 0 and bazillion can have a 0 and a dot before it, and every one of them is less than 1. Splendid, Robert. I'm proud of you. But proud as he was, he could not leave well enough alone. He had a new idea. How many of your numbers, after the dot, have an interesting life of their own? Would you like to see what I mean? Oh, yes, said Robert, just as long as it won't cram the beach with famous numbers. Don't worry, your big calculator will take care of them. All you need is to enter 7 divided by 11. Robert didn't need to be told twice. 7 divided by 11 is 0 0.6363636363636363. Hey, what's up? All those 36s? I bet it goes on forever. You bet right. But that's nothing. Try dividing 6 by 7. Robert entered. 6 divided by 7 is 0 0.8571428571428571. The same numbers keep coming back, he cried. 857142. Over and over. It's like spinning in a circle. They really are fantastic creatures, numbers. In fact, there's no such thing as an ordinary number. Every one has its own features, its own secrets. You never completely understand what makes them tick. That chain of nines after the zero, for instance. All those nines, and still quite not one. And there are many others that behave even worse, that go off the deep end after their zero. They are called the unreasonable numbers, and the reason they're called that is that they refuse to play by the rules. If you have another moment for me, I'll be glad to demonstrate. Robert knew by now that whenever the number devil made a point of being polite, he was in for something. But he was so curious he couldn't resist. Fine, please do, he said. You recall your hopping game, I'm sure? What we did with the two and the five and the ten. Ten times ten times ten equals a thousand, which we write ten to the third power equals one thousand, because it's faster. Right. And when we hop with the two, we get two, four, eight, sixteen, thirty-two, and so on. Or, as always with your little tricks, till the cows come home. Well then, said the number devil, how much is two to the fourth? Sixteen. Pretty good, huh? Perfect, my boy. Now let's go to the first hop in reverse. Hopping backwards, so to speak. Only when you go backward this way, you don't really hop. We call that step taking the rutabaga as if we were pulling one of those fine root vegetables out of the ground. So, what is the rutabaga of four? Two. Right. Taking the rutabaga is the reverse of our first hop. So the rutabaga of a hundred is ten, and the rutabaga of ten thousand is a hundred. What's the rutabaga of twenty-five? Twenty-five, Robert said, is five times five, which makes its rutabaga five. Keep it up, Robert, and you'll be my apprentice someday. Rutabaga of thirty-six? The rutabaga of 36 is 6. Rutabaga of 5,929? Are you crazy or something? Robert shouted. How do you expect me to do that one? Mr. Bobble plagues us enough with dumb problems in school. I don't need to dream about them. Calm down, calm down, said the number devil. Little problems like that are what the pocket calculator are made for. Pocket calculator? The thing's as big as a couch. Be that as it may, you'll notice it has a key with this sign on it. Radical symbol. Which means, rutabaga! Right. Now give it a try. The square root of 5,929 equals, Robert did what he was told, and immediately read the following of the back rest of the couch calculator. 77. Fine. Now try onto your hat, and try the rutabaga of two. Again, Robert did as he was told, and got the following. 1, 4, 1, 4, 2, 1, 3, 5, 6, 2, 3, 7, 3, 0, 9, 5, 0, 4, 8, 8, 0, 1, 6, 8, 8, 7, 2, 4. 
splat, he cried. It's utter gibberish. Number stew. I can't make head or tail of it. Nor could anyone else, my boy. That's the point. The rutabaga of two is an unreasonable number. Is there any way of knowing how it goes on? Because I have a feeling it does. You are right, but I'm afraid I can't help you there. Taking the number of any farther would mean running myself or my calculator into the ground. Wild, Robert said. A real monster. But write it like this. Rutabaga too. And butter wouldn't melt in its mouth. Well, let's try something a little less daunting. He drew a few figures in the sand and said, Have a look at these. Count up up small boxes inside the squares and tell me whether you notice something special about them. One times one equals one to the second power equals one. Two times two equals two squared equals four. Three times three equals three squared equals nine. Four times four equals four squared equals 16. You bet I do. They're all happy numbers. Right. You see how it works, don't you? Count the number of boxes on the side of each square, and you've got the number in the hop width, and vice versa. If you know how many boxes the square has, 36, say, and take the numbers rutabaga, you get the number of boxes along the side of the square. Rutabaga 1 equals 1. Rutabaga 2 equals 2. Rutabaga 9 equals 3. Rutabaga 16 equals 4. Great, Robert said Robert. But what's that got to do with the unreasonable numbers? Well, squares are wily beasts. Never trust a square. They may look innocent, but they can be full of tricks. Take this one, for instance. And he carved a perfectly ordinary empty square into the sand. Then he pulled a rubber ruler out of his pocket and laid it diagonally across it. Now if each side has the length of one. One what? One inch or one foot? Robert interrupted. It makes no difference, said the number devil impatiently. One whatever you please. Call it quewing, quying, for all I care. Now tell me how long the red line is. How should I know? The rutabaga of two, shouted the numbered devil triumphantly. How did you get that, said Robert, who was starting to feel overwhelmed again. Don't worry, said the numbered devil. We're coming to it. All we have to do is place another square over it at an angle. He pulled five more rulers out of his pocket and laid them in the sand, which made this figure look like this. Now guess how big the red square is, the one with the angle on the back one. I have no idea. The red square is exactly twice as big as the black one. Shift the lower half of the black one into one of the four corners of the red one, and you will see why. It reminds me of a game we used to play when I was little, Robert said. Heaven and hell, we called it. We'd fold a sheet of paper into sections, painted black and red. Open it to black, and you went to heaven. Open it to red, and you went to hell. And do you see that in this instance, there is twice as much red as there is black? I do. Good. Now, since the area of the black square is one times one coin, we agreed to call the length of each side a coin, remember? We can write it as one to the second power. And if the red square is twice as large as the black, what is its area? Two times one to the second, said Robert. In other words, two. Correct. Then how long is each side of the red square? I'll give you a hint. All it takes is a backward hop. I see, said Robert. The scales falling from his eyes. Rutabaga, you need to take the rutabaga of two. Which brings us back to our cockeyed, totally unreasonable number. 1.414213. Stop, stop, Robert cried. You'll drive me crazy if you keep on with that number. It's not as bad as all that, said the number devil. But we don't need to work it out. Just don't go thinking that unreasonable numbers are a rarity. Quite the contrary. Take it from me. They're like sands on the beach, more common than even the other kind. But there's an infinite quantity of other kind, the ordinary ones. At least that's what you've been saying and saying and saying. Because it's true. Believe me. It's just that there are many, many more unreasonable ones. More than what? More than infinite quantity? Exactly. Now you're going too far, said Robert in no uncertain terms. I refuse to believe it. More than infinite? Nothing is more than infinite. That's a lot of malarkey. That's what it is. Want me to prove it? Asked the number devil. Want me to conjure up all the unreasonable numbers at once? No, anything but that. The nine chain was bad enough. Besides, what kind of proof is magic? Blessed, the number devil said. You've got me there. But he didn't seem terribly annoyed. He merely frowned and started thinking hard. I could probably come up with another proof, he said at last. But only if you insist. No, thank you, said Robert. I've had enough for today. I'm beat. If I don't get a good night's sleep, I'll be in for it tomorrow in school. I think I'll stretch out on our calculator, if you don't mind. It looks awfully inviting. Be my guest, said the number devil, as Robert lay down on the fleecy, furry, couch-sized calculator. You're asleep as it is. 
You learn best when you sleep. And he tiptoed off so as not to awaken him. Maybe it's not so bad after all, Robert thought. In fact, he's pretty cool. Robert sat peacefully and dreamlessly. Late into the morning, he completely forgotten the next day was Saturday. And on Saturday, of course, there's no school. <laughs>